Most cameras out there have one of these, or one of these, and some cameras can use one of these, or something like this. Oh, and your phone may have one like this, too. Each of those tries to give us something that we sometimes need more of in photography, light. If you're at a party, it's sort of dark, but you want to take a photo of your friends. You pull out your camera and take a photo. The camera senses that there isn't enough light on the scene, so it activates that flash, hits everyone with some light, drains your battery a bit, and gets ready for the next shot. The good news is that the photo didn't come out completely dark. The bad news is that everyone looks a bit flat and washed out. It's the same with these larger external options. Oh, it's dark. Let's brighten things up. But when you do this, you get the same results, and you can get big shadows behind the subject. It's the same with this or one of these. Our tendency is to want to hit the subject with light to make the camera happy and make the photo brighter. Quickly though, we may realize that the camera and the light source being in the same place is a bit harsh and doesn't look natural at all. Here's the secret. The light needs to come from somewhere other than the top of the camera. There are a few ways to do that. The first method is the easiest, but will require an add-on flash for your camera. Not all cameras support this, but DSLRs, many mirrorless cameras, and some compact cameras do. Instead of physically removing the flash from the camera, we're going to use the environment around us to bounce or reflect the light. If you're bouncing the light off of a nearby surface, like a low ceiling, a diffuser like this can help as well. I'm going to show you one of my secrets for bouncing right now. I put the diffuser on, and I angle the head at 45 degrees, and I fire away. The diffuser is spreading the light out, and this flash is powerful enough to hit the ceiling and other nearby surfaces to have the light coming in from all over, rather than straight from the camera. Another popular configuration is no diffuser, but a bounce card with the flash head pointing straight out. If there's a nice white wall at your back, you can even bounce the light without the card, which can create a nice soft light. How did I learn to bounce light? I experimented a lot. There's no substitute for experience when you're in that new situation or venue and you need to get the best light possible. The next level of flexibility is to get the flash completely off the camera. With some flash and camera combinations, this can be done wirelessly, where your pop-up flash will communicate remotely to your external flash. No wires, no mess, but there is some setup required. An easier but less flexible method is to wire the camera and flash like I've done here. In this configuration, I get some flexibility to move the flash around so that the light source comes in from the side and maybe above the subject a bit. Even just a little bit of practice with this cord, you'll get results that can be much better than direct flash. Like usual, I can't tell you what method is best for you. I've shown you some of the different options available and I encourage you to experiment as much as possible. Is flash for everyone? No. Some people don't like to use it at all, but if you're like me and like to come away with a decent shot regardless of the circumstances, a running start into flash photography will help you get those shots no matter the lighting.